What's going on, adventurers? So, today we're going to be doing some more jewelry stuff. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take this 1950 Ben Franklin half dollar and this lovely piece of turquoise, and I'm going to make them into a pendant. So, bear with me. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this Ben Franklin half dollar, and I've already started. But I'm going to flatten this surface on this side, and I'm going to mount the turquoise right there. Just going to set it right in the middle, um, and then solder on my jump ring and do everything else I got to do. So stick with me, and we'll get a finished pendant in no time. Okay, so now you can see, the dang camera will ever focus, that I've gotten all the high spots off of this. Now I'm going to take some big flat sheet sandpaper, and I'm going to rub the coin across that. And for those of you who don't know, there's a trick that you can do, where you take a piece of painter's tape, and you put a little tape on it and a little tape on one side and then pinch it up in the middle and it kind of makes a little bitty handle that will actually allow you to sand that flat a lot faster. So without further ado, let me do that. Alright, so I've been working on it with the 220 grit for a minute, just sanding it, and it's it's good enough. I'm going to set my stone right about there anyway, so that last little bit of scuffed area is not going to really show at all, but I'm going to run this, I'm going to pull out the 500 grit and run it up to a 500 grit. Then I'm going to take it out to the garage where I'm going to stamp my maker's mark on it and I'm going to take my planishing hammer and do a nice dimpled rustic looking finish on there and then be right back. Alright, so we're out in the garage, Oops, flash on, there we go, and I'm going to run this thing through a heating cycle, and then I'm going to take my stamps right there that I have, and I'm going to stamp my maker's mark on it, on that side, and then on that side, I'm going to take the ball end of my planishing hammer here, and I'm just going to give it some light hammer strikes all, all the way around it to give it kind of a dimpled effect. So, let's see if we can't get this torch to light. Oh, there we go, we got fire. For the record, it is cold out. Oh, uh, y'all can't see through those gross windows. It is snowing outside, so. Okay, so now I've taken a piece of tape and I'll put it across the coin to give me a bit of a straight edge there. Then I'm going to take these punches and I'm going to punch my initials right into there. And hopefully it comes out pretty decent looking, but I don't have a tripod to hold the camera uh, while I do that, so I'll be back. Alright, check it out. There it is. J. Ford. Now I'm going to kneel that once more and start doing my hammer strikes on here. The reason I'm annealing is, as you can see, you can definitely see the indentation. So if I go to start hitting on that on this backside without annealing it, 
it's going to split that, split it real quick. So I'm going to plant, anneal this and planish it out, and then I can start on my hammer strikes on the back. I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, we're back. So I annealed it and I ran my planishing hammer across this to make it all nice and smooth again. And then I annealed it again. I can't stress that enough. Anneal as much as possible, even when you don't think you have to, anneal it again. Especially when working with old junk silver like this, it'll split real easy. So always anneal your stuff as much as possible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my planishing hammer here and I'm just going to do a bunch of light hammer strikes and I can't stress that enough light just just little just little bumps now I need to hold that and I don't have a tripod so I'll be back in just a second to show you some of the hammer texture there boom and we're back so as you can see it's starting to get a really nicely hammered texture there which I accomplish by just slowly turning the coin and hammering around the outside with just little, like I said, little, just light taps, no harder than that, just little ones. Just, just get a rhythm going and just bounce the hammer off of it real lightly and just keep turning it. And right now, I'm about due for another annealing treatment so I'm going to anneal this and then keep going on the hammer strikes and I'll show you guys what I'm what I get satisfied with here in a minute. All right everyone. Let's wait on this camera focus any day now. So as you can see initials are done and god I hate this camera. But a beautiful hand hammered finish on there that'll polish up really nice and one last thing that I found is good to do is just take the hammer and real gently just kind of just tap it and I probably should have put a cloth or something over that but it didn't really do anything and what that did was that flattened the coin back out because when you when you work around the edge like that it deforms the coin into kind of a cup shape so there's my hand hammered finish there's my initials on there now to take it back inside and solder on a bezel all right we're back for a second i goofed up and didn't get any footage of doing the bezel but i came back inside dropped the coin we were working on down in the pickle here and then I went and I got some bezel wire that I got from Rio Grande Jewelry Supply and I measured it out on my stone I cut it I soldered it and there we have the bezel that we're gonna use um, so if you don't know how to solder a bezel there's plenty of tutorial videos on YouTube already look up the ones by John Hartman from Durango Silver he is so awesome. He's like the Bob Ross of silversmithing, I swear. So I'm going to let these sit in the pickle for a little while until they're nice and clean. And then we'll be back and we're going to solder that bezel onto that coin backing plate there and get us a pendant started. Okay, so now while the stuff's in the pickle getting nice and clean for us, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of an old coin here that I actually used to make this pendant here which I didn't get video of making this pendant and it's still a little rough but as you can see I got the Ben Franklin half dollar on the back of that pendant I made my own jump ring and bail soldered everything came out pretty nice I mean it's it's a little rough still but you know, for just practice, it's nice. But anywho, so I'm going to use the outside edge of this coin to make my jump ring and my bail for my other coin. Because if you can see on here, it's got that nice textured edge. And I want to use that edge for my jump ring and bail. That way it matches the coin that it's going to go on. Because they're both uh, Ben Franklin half dollars. So I, I kind of wanted to 
reuse as much of my scrap as possible. So now we're going to anneal this. I'm going to file it and make it even and then bend it into a bale and a jump ring. And I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see here, that's going to be my little jump ring. And then I'm going to clean this up a little bit more, bend it into a loop, and that's going to be my bale. And you can still kind of see in God right there and barely get the texture of the edge of the coin. So that's going to be a really neat bale for this piece. Um, it'll just look really cool, I think, anyways. But. All right, so I'm going to continue working, and then I'll be right back with our next step. All right, so while the jump ring is in the pickle, I'll get back to that here in a minute, I thought I would pull this out of the pickle and get this bezel soldered on here. So right now, I don't know if you can really see too good on the camera, Oh, there it is. I made a little mark that shows my top dead center up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some flux under that. And I'm going to put some little solder pauldrons right there. And I'm going to solder this bezel onto this plate right now. And then I'll come back and show you that. But as you can see, it's got that nice hammered finish on there. and it's just going to be quite a lovely piece, I think. So I'm going to get that soldered and show you guys the results. All right, check it out. Boom, bezel cup soldered. And now it's going to go into the pickle. And you can see the jump ring, the homemade jump ring I'm going to solder on there. It actually looks kind of huge now that I look at it, but oh well, it's going to look cool. All right, well, I'm gonna work on that jump ring a little bit more and we'll be back. Okay, so the jump ring is ready. I already had one of those ready and I'll get back to that in a second. And the pendant itself is in the pickle, so I decided to come in and make a bale, which you can see I already did here and got no footage of. So I took, well, first off, I got into my bag of silver scraps here and I found the band of an old ring and I snipped a section out of the band of that old ring and using my pliers there I formed it into a round section and I also managed to get the piece of the ring, I can't hardly make that out because of this dumb camera, that it's marked 925, there it goes, it's marked 925 on there. So my bale is going to have its own hallmark on it, which I thought was pretty neat. Couldn't have, couldn't have came out any better. So there's the bale that's going to go on the jump ring as soon as everything comes out of the pickle, which should be momentarily. I'm going to go in there and check on it and then come back and I'm going to solder on the jump ring and as a treat, I think I'm going to use some of the sparkle wire from Rio Grande <laughs> and uh, solder some sparkle wire onto the pendant itself. So stay tuned for that. All right, everyone, we're back. It's the next morning. As you can see, the wire came out of the pickle. I've got my jump ring ready. <clears throat> um, I think I'm going to do this first and then put my jump ring on after that so for those of you who haven't soldered much solder is going to go to you to the heat so i'm going to try and heat up around the wire and the bezel so it pulls the solder in underneath the bezel there or underneath the wire and i'm going to put some stop flow on the wire so it doesn't obscure the detail on it but i'll be back Maybe I can get some footage of that. All right, there we have it. As you can see, I got my little balls on. 
they don't look the best on there and they kind of jumped when the flux popped but I'll fix that with a file on a Dremel tool and then the jump ring I couldn't be happier with that jump ring I'll file that up real nice and this thing's gonna it's gonna actually look like an, a real real piece of jewelry folks so I'm gonna pop this in the pickle and then we'll be back for maybe some filing and stone setting and stuff all right we're back from the pickle looking pretty good so I already started filing in there and cleaning up that jump ring making everything look nice and symmetrical well Ben's still looking good I'm gonna polish him up and uh, yeah I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and start polishing so let's get to that Filing done. The jump ring is looking pretty good. And the little the little balls are looking a little more round. Hit those with the file too, but everything's looking real nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna start hitting it with a light sandpaper now. Just barely start sanding it down. Maybe some, I don't know, some thousand grit or five hundred grit. We'll see. But we're nearing completion, folks. Almost time to set the stone. All right. So I sanded it, and I went up to a thousand grit, and then I actually put a polishing wheel on my Dremel tool and using some red polish I gave it a quick initial buffing and I do that because if there's any like scratches that you can't really see too good when you run a buffing wheel over it real quick and then wash it off all those scratches are super readily apparent like brings them right out so I did that man it's looking pretty decent I gotta say um, there's a couple areas like right around the rim of this bezel on the face of this that I need to hit a little bit harder, um, cause there's still some scratches and then I just need to polish the heck out of it and it should be ready to set the stone and then fix any minor flaws that I notice after the stone gets set, you know, make sure the bezel's nice and all that, but we're nearing completion folks. Oh, before you go setting any stone in, don't forget to solder your bale on. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try and demonstrate some soldering at least once in this video. So I don't know if you can see, but I've got the tiniest little piece of solder on there. And I'm going to gently heat it. I don't want it to pop off. And... Yeah, it popped off. So, hold on just a second. Alright, back on. And now I've got it semi-welded into place. So now you just kind of want to feather that ring. Just feather it, feather it. And you want to hit both joints. Make sure you get the heat on there evenly. And before long... Turn the heat up just a little bit. See, it's all flowed to the one side, so I'm going to heat the other side of the ring up. I thought I could. Let's see if it'll draw it back over. Come on, draw it back over. And there you go, see? Now since the one side of the gap is hotter, it's just gonna draw that solder back over. 
Here in just a second, I'll have that gap closed. And that's pretty good. All right. So, zoom in. There you go. The bale is soldered. Just a little tiny bit of solder. That's all I wanted to do. Now I'm going to go drop that in the pickle one last time. And then we're ready for a final polish. Alright, that's the last time it's going in the pickle, I swear. So now I'm going to hit that top ring with just a little bit of sandpaper. This damn camera would ever work right for me ever in its life. And then uh, after that, oh, there, oh, almost there, no, not quite. All right, well, I've only got a couple areas I still need to hit with the sandpaper. God dang this camera. And after that, it's gonna get its final polish. Maybe the camera will finally cooperate with me. Ooh, look how shiny it is now. Not bad at all, huh? Not bad. So, now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Boop. Fits right in. So, I see the stone fits, but what I like to do is oh where's my baggie i like to take just a touch of sawdust and a drop of super glue and put it behind that stone before i actually put the bezel on not only does it raise the stone just slightly to make it poke out a little bit more it also gives a nice cushiony bedding to protect it from any impacts so give me one second Okay, so I got the stone put in there now. Got the little bit of sawdust and the super glue under there. Now just just pinch that right there for just a minute or so to let that super glue kind of set. And then now what I want to do is if you have one of these bezel pushers, that's cool, but I don't really care much to use that bezel pusher. I like to take something like the curved edge of my pliers here and just gently work around the edge of that bezel until there's no gap between the stone and the the bezel itself so I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll see what happens Oops. I'll try and get in close for this. You just kind of push, push, 
push and push. Sometimes it helps just to kind of gently roll it inward while you're doing it. Oh, don't hit your stone. So will it peat? Oh, don't do that. Right then. Sometimes I like to start on one side, do a little, then go to the other side, then do a little, then go to the other side. That way you get even all the way around and it's not bunched up. But I'm going to do this and you guys don't have to watch me anymore. Here's the big reveal. Pretty stinking nice. And my favorite part. My name right on the back. No, I'm just kidding. I think it's really cool. It's made out of a 50 cent piece, but I hope everybody really liked this video and please subscribe while you're here for more jewelry content and check out all the other content on my channel. And hopefully these pieces continue to get better and better because as you can see, I'm in a very small workspace at the end of my bed in my bedroom. So, and I'm using super cheap tools. I think I got everything on here off of like Amazon and Walmart.com. So if you, you know, if you just have a will, you can do this kind of stuff and start putting out really nice pieces. And the more you practice, the nicer your pieces are gonna get. And don't be afraid to get creative. Just get creative, because I made every single piece on here except that bezel wire. So if you have an idea, don't be afraid to fail and just do it. Make an adventure out of it.